everyone. This video will show you like how to use the Ripple VNA to measure the cable length. So if you can view from here the distance, okay. So the cable distance is around like 1.03 or 1.05, okay. And here will be the marker is like one here, and it show like 10 nanosecond, okay. That means at this point the time is 10.08259 nanosecond and i will show you like how to use the ripple vna to measure like time domain so we can also like choose like assist and then time okay so when we click on time then okay so we can adjust the time is like 30 nanosecond and here will be like five nanoseconds okay so we can view from here the time is around like 10.0825 nanoseconds okay so how to do this i will show you the setting for the ripple vna okay first let's say we close this and we open a new gui okay so the software will like this and we can just um, double click on this and close all of this like S21 and S21. Just right click assist as setup. Then you choose time domain and you can choose like impedance here. Okay, for the y axis. Then click OK. But you can view like here is like nothing is popped out because our S11 here is only for frequency domain so for time domain you need to click on edit here click on like plus tdr for time domain then click ok then choose low pass and auto window you can choose like hemming just click ok then for our velocity factor is for my cable is like 0 0.690 Okay, I will explain in calculation later. So just click on OK. Then still haven't bought anything because we haven't choose like the S11. So you just right click and then choose S11. Then you can view the port out here. And for the assist, right, you need to click auto or you can choose it manually. Okay, so we can set it manually like 100. Here will be like 0 and 10. Okay. So for the time here, we can set like 30 nanosecond. Okay, because roughly we know that for one meter cable is like 10 nanosecond. So here will be like, uh, we can say like five nanosecond. So click OK. Then you will roughly get something like this. Okay, and then we can right click here, the marker, and you, you can view the marker is here and then it's like 10.0825. If you want to delete the marker, you can just click on here and click delete here. Okay. Next, I also can show you like if you want to change to like view in meter, you can just go to axis here, change to distance. Okay, so we can direct measure the cable distance. Okay, how long is the cable? Then just click OK. And we can view from here it's like because it's 30 nanometer so it's too short that's why you can see it's a flat line here so we just right click choose the axis we can set it like we can say like 3 meter and here will be like um, 0 0.5 meter okay oops yeah. oh okay. 3 and 0 0.5 okay then you can see it's like view from here is like zero meter until three meter and our drop point will be like that see like 1.04 1.03 or 1.05 meter of the cable length then i will show you the calculation how we're going to get this value okay here yeah. how to measure voice cable length First, you need to like check the phase velocity of the cables. Okay, so because of the velocity of a signal in the medium is less than 
that in free space and it depends on the permeability and permittivity of the material. This means like let's say you have a VNA, like our Ribra now, is like measuring the cable, and the cable inside actually have the permittivity or permeability of the material, but for cable inside slide usually will be like the front, so it's only permittivity without permeability. So permeability will be always one. The signal actually is depend on what is inside the coaxial cable. Okay, so I will explain it. So coaxial cable working at high frequency has a phase velocity that can be calculated. Okay, so we're going to calculate the phase velocity for coaxial cable. Here is the formula you can view from here. It's like phase velocity is equal to one over square root permittivity and permeability. So one over of expand the permeability and permittivity, you can have like speed of light. Okay, so speed of light now is like divide with square root the mu here and the epsilon here. Next, so we know that like the front value is for dielectric property is like 2.1, the dielectric constant, and uh, the mu here is like equal to 1 because it's, it's a non magnetic material. And then the speed of light is like 3 times 10 power of 8. Okay, so next we can get our phase velocity equal to 207 times 10 power of 8. So because of the teflon inside the cables, so we have need to include the teflon dielectric constant. That's why it's not fast as a speed of light, the cable signal here. Okay, so once we get the phase velocity of the cable, then we can calculate the cable length. So d is the distance in meter. Time is the time reflected back. That means the signal go through here and reflected back. So it's second. Next. So here is the formula like the distance divided with time length is equal to the phase velocity here. Okay. So we can calculate the d equal to phase velocity times with time. Then we have like 10 nanosecond here is from the Libra VNA. Here we get like around like 10 nanosecond. Then after we times it, we get like 2.07 meter. Okay, but just now in here, we get the distance actually is like should be 1.03 or 1.04 meter, right? From here, the marker. But how come that we measure here? How come that we calculate we get like 2.07? Because actually is what we calculate here is two times of the distance. That means right, the this the signal is like transmit and then when they go to the open here, the cable, without anything, then they reflect the back to the port one here. So we get the time is the time reflected back. That means it's the two times that means transmit and reflected. That's why the distance is one meter here, one meter here. Okay. So that's why we need to divide with two to get only one way of the transmission. Then we can get our cable length. So this is how we can calculate the coaxial cable length using the time domain. Okay. Thank you guys.